It's a case that proved a direct link of power between 18th Street and the murderous Mexican mafia. And to make their point, the feds zeroed in on a clique of 18th Streeters known as the most lucrative, the Columbia Little Psychos. A warning, some of the pictures you will see are a little bit disturbing. For every rock of cocaine, gram of heroin, and baggie of marijuana sold on these streets in and around MacArthur Park, the Little Psychos, a faction of the 18th Street gang, got a cut. Every drug dealer paid a tax or rent for permission to operate here on L.A.'s west side during the 90s. This one-time gang insider explains, you don't pay, you die. Well, when we go kill you, we're going to send a couple of guys down there and really make a mess of you. The execution style is a really beautiful way to do it because that sends out a message. The message was simple. 18th Little Psychos owned this neighborhood. And federal prosecutors say shot caller Juan Romero, known as Termite, put dealers on ships so drugs could be sold on the street 24 hours a day. Assistant U.S. Attorney Bruce Reard. Drug dealing in the MacArthur Park area was like McDonald's. It was like a McDonald's. It's busy all day. Feds say rent collectors like Juan Racinos, known as Woody, and Eduardo Panameno, called Junior, were making eight to 10000 a week. Young up-and-comers like Luis Ramirez, Little Junior, were pulling in 1000 a week. Hitman and workhorse Anthony Coco Zaragoza, 18, boldly tattooed on his face, was receiving nearly 300000 a year while locked up in prison. They pattern themselves after East Coast organized crime, and they... They, they do relish the trappings. Moving into this ritzy Burbank compound, one shot caller even displayed this framed picture of Al Pacino playing the Godfather. There were lowriders, SUVs, Mercedes, jewelry, jet skis, nice offices, and expensive helicopter rides. By the late 1990s, prosecutors say 18 little psychos were collecting about $4.5 million a year. They washed money through a couple of restaurants, a used car lot, and a juice bar. Former federal prosecutor Luis Lee. They ran it essentially like a corporation. Gang accounting required all the cash to be marked so the Mexican mafia knew who was paying taxes. Francisco Martinez, known as Puppet, was at the top of the little psycho's money chain. M.A., short for Mexican mafia, tattooed on his chest. Puppet was really the puppeteer. He was the godfather of this entire operation. Every decision on the street went through him. Investigators say when Puppet went to prison in 1994, he ordered the execution of Carlos Lopez, known as Truco. Truco and his aunt, Donatia Contreras, ambushed with AK-47 submachine guns. Truco, a rival Mexican mafia associate, had tried to move in on Puppet's territory. Disrespect will not be tolerated. With Puppet behind bars, Ben say his wife, Janie Garcia, became his voice on the street, called the Lady Boss or Black Widow. The FBI saw rent collectors delivering tens of thousands to her house in Monterey Park. Inside this pool hall, collector Lefty Cazales was executed after disrespecting her, making a $10,000 payment in $1 bills. They finished him off with a, a round in his mouth. Several years later, the FBI found nearly a half million in cash during a search of three houses connected to Janie Garcia. 10,000 stashed in a vacuum cleaner, 40,000 in this duffel bag. Feds traced another 162,000 she spent in cash. All this while holding a food stamps card. After agents confiscated the cash, from prison, Puppet Martinez ordered a hit on one of his most loyal lieutenants suspected now of being a rat. On this street, the lieutenant survived seven bullet wounds. Not long after, 18th Street soldier Alberto Pina, known as Nephi, was arrested with two assault rifles near his bed. 18th Street at war with each other. And that turned out to be its demise. The FBI moved in in part to stop the killing. Just this month, Mafia boss Puppet Martinez was sentenced to life in prison. A dozen little psychos are already doing prison terms, ranging from five years to life. Another dozen will be sentenced between now and this June. Ironically, 
There was never a rat in the organization at all, only federal wiretaps.